Who goes there? Ah, it's you, brave traveler. Would you allow me to regale you the time the Human Torch moved in with Peter Parker? It's quite a fascinating tale. Sit down, enjoy the feast, and revel in the story I am about to tell you. Very sorry about that. I, I just wanted to set the tone, but uh, I'm going to tell you guys a story about Johnny Storm, aka Human Torch, moving in with Peter Parker after being resurrected and after dying and then being resurrected again. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the story. It is a story that holds a special place in my heart, and who knows? Maybe I'll tell you more stories like this in this certain format, but yeah, enjoy. Give it a like and thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. All right. I don't know what originally inclined me to make a video like this, but I just thought it was a cool concept to cover because I don't really see a lot of media ever cover this. But Peter Parker isn't a stranger to just having roommates and like either messing them over or having a really good time with them. One of the first roommates that Peter Parker ever has is actually his best friend at the time, Harry Osborn. The two had a pretty good flat together and, you know, Peter Parker was living in luxury at the time, up until the entire apartment was destroyed and the two went on to just couch surf and stuff, but they never actually moved in together after this. And literally not even a couple issues later, Peter Parker actually moves in with his old bully, Flash Thompson. And ironically, they kind of get along very well. And if you read some of the early issues when they move in together, it's actually kind of funny with context because when they're looking for apartments together, Peter Parker has a bomb strapped to his forearm and he's just sweating profusely and Flash Thompson doesn't understand why. However, this pairing wouldn't really last that long, only a couple issues, and Peter would leave because he couldn't stand Flash Thompson's neatness. Ed, what a dick. And after this for a long time, he didn't really have any roommates, but he did end up actually moving in with a roommate called Randy Robertson. And if the last name is kind of familiar to you, he's actually the son of Robbie Robertson, the now chief editor of the Daily Bugle. Now this pairing was actually pretty cool and the writing at this time was done very well with some pretty funny moments like Peter Parker keeping a piece of molded cheese and calling it Kevin in the fridge for weeks or the one time Randy actually bumped into Peter Parker while he was belting out Bohemian Rhapsody at the top of his lungs butt naked in the shower. Yeah, good times. Now a long time after this, I'm talking 20 years, he didn't have a single roommate, he lived on his own. But uh, rent in New York is pretty high, so he had to get roommates fast. So he ended up moving back in with Randy and also the villain Boomerang. And I know what your first question might be, why did Peter Parker move in with a villain if he knew he was a villain? Well, this was actually in so Peter Parker could keep tabs on crime in New York that was low level. And it's actually pretty smart. This also opened the opportunity for several different ways to tell a story, like for instance Boomerang bringing Peter Parker to the bar with no name for trivia night because it's about Spider-Man and Peter declared like an hour before this that he knew everything about Spider-Man. And when he goes into the bar with no name, he finds out that you have to be a villain to be in there, so he claims the new name, The Liar. <laughs> it's pretty stupid, but it's also wicked funny. And watching Peter just groan and cringe at the answers that the villains get wrong and just going up on stage and answering every question right is just perfect. To add to this, every time Peter Parker gets a question that's really difficult correct, every villain in the room gives Peter more and more of their respect. And it's kind of ironic because when Peter Parker is Spider-Man, these villains hate him, but now he's posing as a villain and they all love him. However, that love doesn't really last that long because a bounty is set on Boomerang and Peter gets caught in the crossfire and everybody just begins to hate the both of them. It's pretty sad. I also kind of miss the way these stories were told and written because what Amazing Spider-Man is now is not that good. But now we get to the topic that you all clicked the video for, Johnny Storm moving in with Spider-Man. Now the events leading up to this are a little bit wacky because in the beginning, Johnny Storm actually dies, or we're supposed to believe that for a very long time. And I remember reading this issue as a kid, and I remember it stuck with me because I 
read for the first time one of my favorite superheroes dying and in a heroic way granted but it was very emotional and this issue is completely silent and it just shows the emotions of each different marvel character in the universe and how they process a death of the family like the fantastic four because the fantastic four are kind of like royalty in the marvel universe at this time and in the issues preceding this, the Fantastic Four actually get a revamp with new suits and they're called the Future Foundation. And we find out that Johnny Storm left a will for the entire Fantastic Four. And in this will, he wants Spider-Man to fill his spot on the team. And at first, some of the members are really reluctant because they don't want to face the reality that Johnny Storm is dead and he's not coming back. But Reed Richards is one of the first ones to accept it and say that we need to embrace the future and in the next panel it's spider-man in a very hopeful panel too i might add and from that point on spider-man would end up joining the future foundation and going on several different adventures with them and granted there was no guarantee that human torch was ever coming back maybe just subtle hints but at the time nobody knew that he actually was coming back but oh boy when johnny storm came back he came back in a blaze of fury because he was the commander of the army of Annihilus and he had Annihilus like chained down as a slave of his. It was badass. Along with this, the build-up and the resolution to the Fantastic Four completely reuniting and hugging each other again is just wonderful and you feel a sense of joy because your team is back together again. Now you may be asking, when did Johnny Storm actually move in with Spider-Man? Well, it was actually kind of a funny instance where they were being transported to a base up in space. That rhymed. And once the Future Foundation arrived at the base, they look down from the base at Earth, and Johnny Storm recollects on how he wants to change as a person, and he needs to. Peter tries to give Johnny some advice about him just running home and trying to get away from everything, and Johnny takes this as him pronouncing that he wants Johnny to move in with him. And Peter kind of just goes with it. He doesn't even reject it. Now, the next issue preceding this takes place three weeks after that agreement was set, and we can see that Peter has several different checklists, and one of them is to get Johnny Storm the hell out of his apartment. And we actually see immediately why Peter Parker wants Human Torch out of his apartment, because Human Torch kind of jukes him into thinking that Electro is attacking New York. And on top of this, Human Torch also parties in his apartment day after day after day, giving Peter no time to sleep. And Peter Parker clearly has had enough of this. On top of this, while Peter Parker is getting his jacket out of the closet to get ready for work, he accidentally trips into a portal to the negative zone. And it's a little bit funny, because when Peter lands, he's not mad at Johnny Storm. He's actually kind of thrilled, because now he can get his catharsis out of beating up all of these alien bugs. But it's soon put to a stop. Because Johnny quickly jumps through the portal to the negative zone, yelling at the bugs to stay away from his nerd. This ends up working, and Peter ends up returning back to Earth, and he's completely angry with Johnny Storm because he didn't write anything on the closet door detailing that the closet was now a portal to the negative zone. However, Johnny Storm doesn't really listen because he's not that good of a roommate, and he just kicks Peter out and tells him to have a good day at work. Following this, we end up seeing Peter Parker at his job, Horizon Labs, where he's doing a presentation for an invention he's created that has limitless potential. However, every time he tries to explain what the device does, Johnny Storm keeps calling Peter Parker, interrupting the entire presentation. This eventually leads Peter Parker to cave and answer the phone, demanding to know what the emergency is, but Johnny Storm just replies that nothing is happening. Basically displaying to the reader that Johnny Storm is the complete and polar opposite of Peter Parker resembling almost little to no respect to what Peter does for his day-to-day -day life. Even asking Peter Parker mid-presentation if he can go get him drinks for a party he's having tonight. This ends up really frustrating Peter Parker, so he starts screaming over the phone to never call him on this number ever again. It's only meant for emergencies. He has to get it through that thick head of his. And all Johnny Storm says is, well, we really need those drinks. And this ends up leading Peter Parker's presentation to go completely south. And after this, you would think that Peter Parker wouldn't even get the drinks for Johnny Storm, but 
he is such a great guy that he goes to the supermarket anyway and gets the soda for him, despite what he did before. And when Peter Parker comes back to his apartment, it's complete chaos with like different aliens all over the universe come together to just party in his apartment. But instead of Peter Parker going against the grain and trying to get all of these aliens out of his house, he decides to party with them. So Peter Parker ends up getting drunk but not drunk on the alien blue milk that they gave him, and they end up having the time of their life in New York, speeding through the streets of New York and going to various different bars and starting fights. Fighting police officers on horseback, dancing in clubs, and Peter Parker even kisses an alien in front of Mary Jane. The following night, Peter Parker barely remembers a thing, but he also starts to rethink kicking out Johnny Storm and thinking to himself that maybe he overreacted a little bit. But while Peter Parker is waking up and getting his morning stretch in, Johnny Storm is seemingly flirting with Mary Jane over the phone, but it's not quite confirmed, but you can kind of tell by the subtle hints in his dialogue throughout the comic panel. I mean, he says Mary Jane says hi to Peter Parker to get him a little bit jealous, but then once he notices he's jealous, he immediately turns around and he says it's a joke, but I don't believe it is to this day. After getting seemingly frustrated, Peter Parker ends up getting up to go take a shower, but when he enters the shower, he starts to scream, and then when he gets out, he drops everything and he just starts to scream Johnny's name. Peter Parker just barrels into Johnny's room and he just starts to yell at him, saying that he's had enough. He's had enough of the horse guys, no more magic doorways, no more running errands, no more stupid phone calls, and most of all, no more you. Get the fuck out. And Johnny Storm is just like, are you asking me to leave? <laughs> and he thinks that Peter is overreacting, so he asks him to show him what happened. So Peter leads Johnny to the bathroom and points at what happened, and he says, that's what did it. And Johnny Storm says, yeah, that'll do it. I'll pack my bags. And what it was was the alien Annihilus taking a shit in Peter Parker's bathroom. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that would be my breaking point too. And with that, that closes the story. Now, a long time after this, he would end up moving in with Robbie Robertson and Boomerang, like I mentioned earlier, but since then, he hasn't really had any roommates and he's just lived alone. And as of recently, with the ending of the Beyond arc, it was kind of looking like Mary Jane and Peter Parker were finally gonna move in together and maybe have a future. However, Marvel has a tendency to not really like to write Peter Parker having a steady relationship, and they'd rather have him break up to make opportunities for new stories, like reviving Gwen Stacy for the 17th time, and have Peter Parker and Mary Jane go through another breakup arc after another breakup arc. But wait, there's something new! Mary Jane actually has two kids and has a new boyfriend and has moved in with them also. Yay, this is good writing. And on top of that, we have a depressed Peter Parker again. I'm not gonna lie, I really miss the Peter Parker that was actually just a teacher or a scientist and had his life somewhat together. It just seems like Marvel now wants to write Spider-Man into 7,000 circles and to keep having him the same way for another 20 some odd years. However, with that, this video is going to conclude. Feel free to hit the like button or share it or even subscribe. I appreciate it either way. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. It took a long time for me to make and I'm very sorry about that. And by the way, the Moon Knight video is actually coming to pretty soon. It's just been put off for a bit because of some personal stuff. But with that, thank you all again, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.